When an object rolls without slipping, it does both rotational motion and the translational motion. It rotates about an axis that goes through its center, while the center does translational motion. We know that when an object rotates about a fixed axis, the distance traveled by a point on the rim equals to r times delta theta, and the speed equals to r times omega, the tangential acceleration equals to r times alpha. Of course, these are only true if the angles are in radians. Because the object rolls without slipping, the distance traveled by a point on the rim also equals to the distance traveled by the center axis. So if we look at the translational motion of the center axis, we have the distance traveled equals to r delta theta. The velocity or the speed of the center axis equals to r omega, and the acceleration of the center axis equals to r alpha. Since a point on the object does both kinds of motion, to analyze the motion of a point on the rim, we will have to combine these two kinds of motion. But before we do that, let's look at the path of a point on the rim. I have taped a marker to this cap. It's a car battery terminal cap. Anyway, I taped the marker here so it can trace the path of its tip when the cap rolls without slipping along this ruler. Now let's compare the path to the combination of these two for those four points on the rim. If the cap only rotates about a fixed center axis, all points on the rim would have the same speed, and their velocities would be, in this case, clockwise and tangent to the circle. If the cap only does translational motion with the center axis, all points on the cap would have the same velocity as its center, which has the same speed as uh, these, the same r omega. For the highest point on the cap, it gets two velocities. So its real velocity, the total velocity, is the sum of these two velocity vectors. 2v to the right. And the velocity of a particle should always be tangent to its path, and this is tangent to this path. For the lowest point on the cap, it also gets two velocities. And when we add these two velocity vectors together, how much do we get? We get zero. When a point on the rim is at this location, it has zero velocity, which matches what we see on the path. Why? because it's a turning point. Just before this, the point on the rim is moving downward, and then after, it begins to move upward. For this point on the cap, it has two velocities, and we have to add these two velocities together by adding vectors, and so the sum is the diagonal of this rectangle. And this rectangle happens to be a square. Each side of the square is v, so the diagonal must be v times the square root of 2. Or we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the speed, the diagonal. It is the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared, which gives us v times square root of 2. Again, the velocity is tangent to its path. For this point, at half the height, it also gets two velocities. If we add these two velocity vectors together, we get a total velocity going that way, which also has a speed of v times square root of 2, and this velocity is tangent to the path. So if the cap rose without slipping, so its center axis has a velocity of 5 meters per second to the right, the highest point would have a velocity of 10 meters per second to the right. 
and this point right here would have a velocity of 5 times square root of 2 slanted that way. And the point right here would have a velocity of 5 times square root of 2 meters per second slanted this way. And the lowest point would have zero velocity.